Welcome to TV20 Classic Sports. I'm your host, Christian Patterson. From all-star matchups to championship games, we've reached into the vault to bring back a part of Cleveland history. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of TV20 Classic Sports. Look like, looks like from uh, observation size-wise, we look like we're somewhat matched up evenly. For the first time. Mm -hmm. See who can come out on top. Yes. Uh, both teams seem to be about even mm -hmm. in height and weight. Okay, we're ready to begin this. Here we go. Nick goes to the American League. However, a very quick turnover. And the foul. Number one with the push. That would be Shandia Ellington, Ellington. representing Alexander Hamilton. However, someone just scored. I missed that, which has put the national team up by one basket. Foul before the shot, I believe. No, it wasn't. Foul in the act of shooting. Okay, that puts number 12, Tamika Grayer, on the line. Her sister is also playing for the same team. Makes her first basket. She has a good touch on her shot. Nice arcing shot. Good follow through. Should make this one. Yes. <laughs> Ties the score up 2-2. Tamika Grayer attends West Tech as a ninth grader. Her average is 10 points per game during the season. You're seeing some good defense right near our scoring table here. Going into the basket. Got the rebound, but still missed the basket. Desiree, as I mentioned, we are seeing some rather elevated play here with these junior division girls. Dangerous pass across the court, but she made it, she got it to her teammate. They're not afraid to shoot. Unable to score. Ball back over to the national team. Ball's in control by Sarah Rivera from Clark. Shot up, no good. Jessica Gonzalez, number one. Three seconds called. She was uncontested with her first shot. She missed it, she got the rebound. She fought for it again, but there was a three second call, which gives the ball back to the American in the red. Whoa. Pass was partially blocked. And as a result, it caused a turnover. So the national team, ball in the control of Sarah oh, Rivera. Good steal. She lost the ball as a steal. Layup, shot. rebound. Up, no good. No good. We're not able to capitalize on that. They're going to have to make uh, use of all their opportunities. Ball Looks for the open away man. Again. Shanita Ellington. Oh, took the ball. Had the dribble, but lost it. Okay, these girls are gonna have to slow down on both sides and, and make better use of their opportunities. They're rushing themselves a little bit. Exactly. When that shot was put up that time, it looked like it was gonna fall. Whoa! So did that one. Got a little excited there and started walking with the ball. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna try this again with the National League. Coming down the court, number eight again, Sarah Rivera. Looks like to be their point guard. Trying to slow the ball down a little bit so that they can work on trying to get a, a score. Which is, as you say, Desiree, I think that's the smarter thing to do. Nice drive to the hole, but she missed the basket. Rebound attempt was no, no good. However, they have maintained control of the ball. Underneath. Finally. Number 12. Put it up. And, uh, Latasha Oliver, who attends uh, Lincoln West High School as a 10th grader. 
She's representing Central Recreation Center. And her favorite NBA players with the Cleveland Cavaliers, Brad Doherty. Okay, we've gone to a jump ball, and it's in the possession of the national team. Okay, got a relatively close game for it to be the beginning of the match. Score four to two. Oh, boy. Okay, here we go again. Yeah, we've been going almost five minutes in this game. And uh, we only have a grand total of six points. Mm -hmm. Four by <laughs> the national team and Ooh. three by the American team. Number 11 has displayed a little bit of a stutter step there, but then the ball got taken away from her. Here comes the J team. Whoa. Romero, rebound, puts it up, and in. That was by Number Jessica 10. Gonzalez. Okay, replay on that. She goes for the basket, misses. No, oh, number 10, Ebony Garrison, representing Sterling, earned those two points there. National team comes down again. Oop. You know, like I said, it's obvious these girls are trying to get used to each other's play. Oh, ho, ho. Nice the basket. lucky bounce of the ball. That ball was put up. It hit the rim. Okay, replay. Number three, Miss Greer. Hits the back of the uh, backboard and it goes in. Puts two points on the scoreboard for her team. Bringing the score now to seven to six. Well, this should be a basket. Yes, indeed. No contact. There was no one there defending against Not at her. All. She had the full lane open to herself. Easy layup. We're going to see that again. No one around her. Takes her time, concentrates. Actually had a little bit of hang time in there while yes, she, she did a little shot. Oh, oh, good play, good play, good play, good number shot. T, tor number two, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tarana Frazier from Lonnie Burton. Averaged six points a game during the season. She attends East Tech, and she's in the 10th grade. Favorite player, Carl Malone. Well, how about the backboard? A little bit of glass there. Kiss the glass, went right into the net. We're going to see that one again. Right there, she's got no Got a girl in front of her, uses the backboard, and it goes in. Just like she planned it. Girls are warming up here. Another one off the backboard. Number 10, Ebony Garrison. Kissed the glass and went in. Wilson, eighth grader. These girls are not afraid to drive to the basket. Replay, she goes up, backboard. Obvious they teach these girls to make sure they, they try to go for that backboard. Yes. Oh! Ball Excellent up. play yeah. under the basket by number 12, Tamika Greer. Okay, here we see it again. She's underneath, she goes up, takes her time, backboard use, two points. And while we were live, there was two points for the national team. For the national team. Oh, we're going to go with a timeout here. Timeout called by the American team. Okay, excellent, excellent play. These girls have done excellent. They're, they're starting to warm up now. They're not afraid to go and drive down the line. Absolutely. Using the backboard. Absolutely. We've seen some good plays off the backboard. They've been kissing the glass. It looks like something they've been working on along the way here. And as we uh, go with this timeout, we're listening again to the music of Mr. Joe D, under the direction of Mr. Joe DeJanet, representing Cadell Recreation Center with his musicians. Been very fortunate to have them here. Okay, and it looks like the girls have gotten their last minute instructions by their coaches. We're now ready to resume play with six minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half of play. The score is 14-11 in favor of the National. In favor of the National. Okay, here we go. 
They've had some substitutions from that timeout. Right now, the national team with that timeout, national team had seven for 13 from the floor. The American team in the red had three from 11. With one three-point shot. In case that you've just joined us, we're here in the final game of the City of Cleveland Girls Basketball All-Star Game in the Junior Division. And this game is being played between the American and the National Conference Leagues, with the National being in the Jade uniform and the American in red. What you're seeing now is the tail end of two shots from the foul line. By number eight, Miss Sarah Rivera, representing Clark. She was unable to connect on her two foul shots. Gives the ball back to the American. Oh, uh, there is almost a turnover. Okay, number four, control of the ball right there. Couldn't hang on, so it caused a turnover for the American team. National team, the ball is being brought down the floor by Ebony Garrison in the Sterling Center. Oh, open all hand by herself, Easy play. puts it up and in. Easy play. Garrison on the basket. Garrison, Garrison's favorite players from the Phoenix Suns replay. We see her underneath the basket by herself, takes her time, backboard up and in. Elementary shot. <laughs> Almost a good shot there. Just caught a little bit of the oh. run. Rebound by Karen Edwards from the Estabrook Center. The ball is being brought down the floor by Ebony Garrison. Oh. And puts it up and in. Again, Miss Garrison goes to the hole. I think she's feeling her oats. She is not afraid to go to the basket. Replay, we see her go up and in. Oh! Number four, Nicole Collins from Woodland Recreation Center. Underneath the basket for the rebound, puts it up and in. It's the first time we've called Nicole's name in this game this afternoon, but uh, I expected good things from her based upon what we saw earlier on today. Okay, girls are looking down the court, looking for the open man. American League was a little bit out of control there. Unable to, to produce the basket. Got some major substitution going on. The ball will be brought in by the national team, which is leading. 18 by a score. to 13. Yes, with three minutes and 40 seconds left in the first half. Okay. Okay, they brought the ball down underneath. Over the hook. A little too hard. Off the basket. That shot attempted by Moncrief. And it's great to see the termination on their faces as they head down the court. Yes. And the last shot attempt by Shanetta Moncrief. It looks like she sort of threw up a prayer, hoping that one of her team members would get the ball on an offensive rebound and perhaps stick it back. But it didn't happen that way. Okay, these girls have a mission. Uh, oh, almost, almost a good again. shot. Yes. Almost a repeat of uh, performance there. One of the few that she's missed. Nicole Collins. She had a nice move. She just didn't get the ball to connect with the basket. I think what happened, Desiree, she had the good angle on the basket, but she had to shoot over one of the national players, and it caused her to miss the right shot. These girls have some moves. <laughs> yes, yes. She look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh! Oh! That counts. Nicole Collins. Oh, goodness. Oh, we have to see that one again. Here she goes, takes the ball up, hesitates, follows through, keeps that concentration even though she was fouled. The look at that. But did you, you see what happened on that play? She shifted the ball from the right hand to the left, mm -hmm. went under the arm. And that's why she defender. was MVP for the, uh, yes. the junior division in her game. And just as you talked, Desiree, about seeing some good play and some good athletic play out of these girls here today, Nicole Collins demonstrated 
the exact thing that you talked about. Oh, yeah. These girls, all of them have a mission. That's why they were selected as All-Stars. And just like in the Midget League, these girls have gotten better. Most of these girls out here have played last year, which has increased their ability. Oh, they're in trouble here. Yes, yes. Almost didn't get it over. Okay, well, they and got it. got over, almost intercepted. Oh, almost. Okay. They're going down court. Pass. Intercepted. Couldn't keep a balance on that almost turnover. And so the ball goes out of bounds to the American team. The American team is caught up a little bit. There's only a two-point difference here. Right. It's 18 to 16 in favor of the national team in the Jade. Nicole Collins They're try again it again. with that steal. Nicole Collins. And Ties the game up, 18-18. Strong Nicole rebounding under the Collins. basket. She got up to a slow start at the beginning of the game. Here's our replay. She gets the rebound, uses the backboard, up and in. Whoa, over and back. Over and back on the midcourt stripe. Skill level is great. Yes, it is. It excites me. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're tied at 18 here. I get so proud of these girls. <laughs> I get With caught up. <laughs> 55 seconds left in the first half. Oh, nice concentration. She wasn't going to let that foul stop her from shooting the ball. It didn't go in. But it's the effort she made. That's right. Puts her on the line. She knows it, that foul would get her on the line. That's Tamika. Grayer, who's on the line, shooting two. You know, a talent like this, and you've got high school coaches in the uh, audience, and the development that they get within the rec centers to hopefully get them to play for the schools. Yes. They could go far. We've had a lot of players within the Division of Recreation go from recreation ball into school ball and then on to college. Well, a lot of times this could be just a motivational piece. That's right. The cause nice of the play. Happen. Here they can gain the confidence, learn uh, the skills, know what it's all about, learn the different techniques that it takes to play this game, mm -hmm. which will take them pretty far along the way as they move through their public school years and on into other worlds of basketball play. Okay, long shot. We've got less than 30 seconds left in the game. Ms. Collins bringing the ball down for the American team. Passes it inside. They get ball, ball control back. Three seconds. They're looking for the open man, though. You know, and it's yes. good to see these girls are not selfish. And even though they don't know each other, they've got one thing in mind. We're working together as a team. You know, I like, the way, the ball. I like the way Nicole Collins went down the floor that time with the ball towards their goal and dished off in the middle right underneath the net. Halftime, perfect score, 18-18. Tied at 18. Totally indicative of the kind of play that we've seen from both teams. Yes. So here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the first half. The score is tied at 18 between these two teams, the American Division team and the national team. OK, we're at halftime. What we're going to do at this point, we're going to be entertained again by Mr. Do Joe DeJanet and the uh, pep band. And in a few minutes, we're going to see Tim, and he's going to be talking to Sandy Balzer and Antoinette Thompson about the Girls Basketball League. All right. Okay. All right. Promising to be an entertaining halftime, as usual. Okay, we'll be back with more. Stay tuned to the Girls All-Star Junior Basketball Championship. All right, we're back at halftime. The girls junior all-star basketball championship game 
with an excellent first half scoring of 18-18 for the National and American League. But right now, we're going to head over to Mr. Tim Wells, who's with two very important individuals who are in charge of our girls' basketball program for the city of Cleveland, right in front of our pep band. A lot of excitement in the air, and it's All-Star Day in the city of Cleveland. And everybody's happy, and things are happening. And two of the key players from behind the scenes are our guests here at halftime. The girls' basketball chairman, Sandy Bowser. Welcome, Sandy. Thank you, Tim. First of all, tell me, what role did your committee play, and what actually did you do this year to get the program going? Well, this year we split into two different divisions, a midget and a junior division, because there were so many girls coming out for the program. And then in the midget division, um, we moved the foul shooting line in about three feet to make it a little easier for the younger girls, 12 and under, to shoot the foul shots. And then we also um, instituted a no full court press for the midget division, and they can pick them up at half court. And then um, also um, we did... Um, Mandatory play rule. Mandatory play rule. Thank you, Tim. Um, mandatory play rule where all the girls have to get it ended, both halves of the game. Your feelings about the league now that it's wrapped up today? Well, it was a, there were some challenges in the, you know, in the league this year, but uh, it's expanding girls' sports tremendously from last year to this year, and we're just going to be keep growing, I think, through next year and following years to come. Okay, we heard one of the girls talk about girls' athletics and how the city has taken an upbeat mood. And the girls' committee really kind of helps establish some rules as far as giving us suggestions. But the real person behind the scenes that does it for the female athletics is the athletic coordinator for the city of Cleveland, Antoinette Thompson. A.T., you have the tough job. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been uh, a lot of fun this year. It's been a lot of challenges, but we've had a lot of fun. When we talk about challenges, what is one of the biggest challenges you saw with the girls' basketball program this year? Um, probably more so with the junior girls and just trying to get them to understand that this is a contact sport even though they say basketball is not a contact sport um, they want to get a little antsy sometimes when they get fouled um, but we pretty much cleared that up and uh, we've had a good season you've been in recreation for a little bit maybe share with us some of those success stories people that played in the program gone on uh, oh we've had uh, quite a few young ladies that have played in the program uh, Nashima Hillman who is now at Vanderbilt uh, starring there. Uh, she played at Quarry Recreation Center. Wanda Ford, who's playing all pro right now, she played at Woodland Recreation Center, just to name a few. Basketball will be over today. What's next for the girls? Oh, we have a lot of things up for the girls. Uh, softball is coming up in April, so they can start signing up at the recreation centers now. Um, our summer program is full of things for females, so just come up to your recreation center and sign up. Let me ask you this. Obviously, when you started taking over the girls athletics we've come from really a situation where now you're able to totally focus on one program what is the most satisfying part of this job i think the most satisfying part is uh, just to see all the young ladies that are interested in playing sports and uh, participating in our activities um, it's been uh... We've, we've grown over the years. We've come from hardly having anything to do with the young ladies to right now I think we're servicing with the girls basketball, I think like 365 young ladies. So we're doing real good with the programs and I think that's the most success for me. And the cost? The cost, uh, we'll let you talk about that part. <laughs> Best secret in town, it's free folks. And yes, you've heard the recreation instructors talk about not just the athletic part, but the educational part about getting yourself together, doing the right attitude. Hey, girls, coming up next to softball, and we're working for you. Hey, Des, our hats go off to Sandy and AT for really making it happen, and back to you for this great day. Okay. Excellent interview. The two very important individuals working within the girls' department. Uh, excellent background music again by the pep band under the direction of Mr. Dijonet, based out of Cadell Recreation Center. They've been supplying us with a lot of pepful music. You know, it makes this atmosphere a little bit more alive, makes yes, it more it like you see on TV, so the girls feel that we do care about them and we're trying to make it more realistic for them. Absolutely. Uh, they deserve it. Their participation in this has been great. They really uh, deserve it. But looking at some of the halftime stats here, one of the main things we want to look at is the national national team, which is in the color jade. They have a 40% field goal uh, percentage rate compared to 24% for the American League. Now, the score is tied 18-18.
but their field goals are going in a lot more than the American League on an average. Yes. Um, yes. We also have, however, although they are they're making more attempts into scoring, free throw percentage, we have 60% free throw percentage for the American team. So the national team is fouling a lot, which is allowing the American team to get on the foul line, which has caused this tie of 18 to 18. I so noticed that there is a zero percentage for the correct, national. Correct, correct. The American team yeah. has been able to handle the foul situation. So we also, and, and as I stated earlier, the, the coaches both commented to me from both sets of the teams that quickness and rebounds were their key. And that's evident because rebounding, we've got 13 rebounds for the first half under the American team in the red and we have 11 rebounds for the national team in the jade and then as far as turnovers six turnovers from the national team and only three turnovers at this point from the American team so they're evenly matched obviously and the score is still tied at 18, 18 even with 18. the turnovers sometimes the turnovers can make a difference Correct. one team and is is yeah. capitalizing on that free throw. Absolutely. The other team is capitalizing on making those field shots out on the court. But the American League's got the ball. And oh. just threw it away. Yes, they did. And caused the turnover, <laughs> which is what we just got through talking about. <laughs> so here we go. Start of the second half of the girls' all-star. You know, Desiree, here. this score being nodded at 18 is very fitting for an all-star game. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. You expect these players to be evenly matched and if you judged it according to the score they are okay Nicole Collins had that drive to the basket she got fouled underneath the basket as she was making the touch here's the, the replay up in the air she's got excellent hang time yes and and she's got that concentration she's gonna shoot that ball whether you she she gets fouled or not absolutely and she's on the foul line see if she can yeah. nothing With but these. Nothing. Nothing but net. It's just like a person slurping spaghetti. <laughs> Nothing but net. Number four. Whoops. And just as I said that, the second shot was missed by Nicole Collins. However, we have a lane violation, so she'll get another chance to sink it. Okay, number eight came into the Once again, she does not make good on that shot. And so the Nationals. Oh, Nicole with the hands to cause the steal. Teammate. Up and in. Teammate Tanetta Brayer takes the drive underneath the basket, scores the layup, brings their team ahead. There's the replay. Up Here comes the same young lady. Tanetta Brayer, Brayer down the court again. Whoa, other side this time. She must have eaten her Wheaties this morning because <laughs> that ball went all the way up over the top of the backboard. Okay, here we go. National team now is uh, down 21-18. They're going to try to work their way back up. That was a good shot that time by Jessica Gonzalez. However, she didn't make connections. Oh, almost. Okay, and they weren't able to capitalize Latasha on that. Oliver. It's American team, but with, led by Ms. Greer, bringing the ball down, passing the ball across the court to teammates. Oh, not enough power behind the shot by number 10, LaShonda Johnson, representing Thurgood Marshall. So, oh, oh what a shot. What a shot by Sarah Rivera. Yeah, representing Clark Recreation Center, averaging nine points a game per season. Oh, I'm sorry, nine points a game during the season. Tanetta Gray. Tanetta Gray got the baseline, drove it, and scored. She averages six points a game Time during out the season. For the Nationals. And with 11 minutes and 40 seconds left in the second half of play, our score is now 23-20. Okay. Uh, obviously, their coaches talked to them during the season. Uh, we've got a replay here. Tanetta Gray going straight to the basket, virtually uncontested, which caused her to get the easy layup. Yes. Yeah, um, the more uh, defense that they have played against them, the harder it is for them. But right now, they're not getting that that intense defense underneath the basket, which is going to prevent them from scoring these baskets. Yes, yes. So uh, 
the girls have definitely proven that they can play offense. They're going to have to pick up a little bit more on the defense to keep the other team from coming back and scoring right away. Absolutely. If you if you can't stop the other team from scoring, uh, a lot of times if you are already behind and you think you're going to catch up by scoring, which is the right way to think about it, but you also got to think about defense so that you stop the other team. You got to do that in order for you to pull ahead. Okay, here we go. We're ready. Coaches have had their time with their team. See what they do. See if they follow their instructions that they received. We've got the uh, national team taking the ball out. Oh, long pass, long, dangerous pass. Intercepted. Oh, Tanetta Gray under the basket. Up and in by Tanetta Gray. Representing Woodland Recreation Center again. Favorite player, Chicago Bulls, Scotty Pippen. Yes, that puts the American team up by five points. We've got a replay on that foul. Tanetta Gray, no, not the foul. Tanetta Gray going for the basket. She was open underneath, allowed her to score, make an easy basket. Oh, nice fake by Sarah Rivera. She lost the ball on the dribble that time on the floor. And she didn't really have control of the begin with. And the basket is good. Teammate looked underneath the basket, saw an open player, took a dangerous pass. It was a dangerous pass, but it connected. She she followed through. We're going to have a replay on that. She looks down. She sees her teammate. Dangerous pass into the to the middle of the court. Almost intercepted, but her player took the concentration, used the backboard. Easy two. She misses the free throw. The basket was by Monique Smith of the American team. So we now have a seven-point spread with the American team being ahead. Oh, wide open in the middle. She couldn't capitalize on the shot, but Sarah realized she had Good a player try. wide open. Tania. Tania Grayer puts it up and in. We can show a lot of the same replays on this. She is always getting the ball underneath the basket right at the key. We're going to see it again here. Monique Collins. Throws down court, sees the open player, Tania Greer. She goes to her favorite side, uses the backboard, easy two. Back to live action here. Ebony Garrison had that ball on the dribble. She was going to attempt a shot, but she lost the ball. Okay. And the ball was turned over to the American team. Nicole Collins brought the ball down the floor. Okay, we're going to see that one again. Nicole takes it down the right side of the court. She lost her man fell behind her, couldn't stay in front of her, gave her the baseline. She got fouled underneath as she made the shot. Well, as she attempted to make the shot, she missed the shot, which puts her on the foul line. She makes the first basket. She attends West Tech High School as an 11th grader. And Orlando Magic, Mr. Hardaway, her favorite player. All right. Her coach's uh, comments, best player in the league, leads the team in rebounding, second, second leading scorer. She can wound you from the outside and kill you from the inside. Now that's complete. <laughs> Tania Greer, in Almost. and out. Oh! Rebound. Tania Greer put that shot up from downtown Cleveland, but didn't make connections. The ball went down and then came back up again, but was rebounded. Uh, it, we're going to see a replay on that. She's outside. Tania Gray has shot that ball outside the three-point. It goes in and out. Her player is alert, number 12 underneath. Her sister goes up, makes the easy layup. That's working with your sister right there. Since halftime, the American team has been able to keep their composure. They've concentrated on all aspects, stealing the ball. Tanea Grayer, favorite side of the court. That one she didn't make. One of the few. <laughs> you know, Desiree, when Ebony Garrison had the ball down on her end of the court, there was too much dribbling that went on there. She was dribbling in the teeth of the defense, mm -hmm. and she did have people on the periphery that were open, but she didn't choose to pass the ball out. I guess she wanted to try to do it by herself and uh, couldn't get it done. There we see it again. 
They go for the jump ball. And they fight under those baskets. They try to get gain in that possession of that ball. They're for real. <laughs> They're serious. Goes to the national team now. They're still behind. Score 32-20. They're trying to come back from a uh, deficit. Rebound, Nicole she Collins. She took a commanding rebound. Shoots it down underneath. Up and good. Total teamwork. These, these By girls Tamika are out to Greer. work together. Yes. This is not a one-man team. They've got a lot of talent. Here we go. We see it again. Collins comes half court, passes down to the open man. She takes it up, concentrates, uses the backboard. Timeout for the national team. Okay, national team now taking a timeout, huh? And the score with that timeout, with seven minutes and 42 seconds left in the game, 34-20, the Americans in the lead. Okay, with that timeout, uh, Tanetta Grayer on the red team for the American squad. She is five for seven right now with 10 points since the half. No, okay, combination. All right, she's got 10 points so far for the game, five for seven. And as I said earlier, you could look at the same replay over and over again. And, and she picks that left side of the basket, <laughs> goes up for the two. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, we're gonna see what uh, what Joe Daniels and Nancy Owens had to say to their team to see if they can come back from behind. They only have seven minutes left or so to play. And they're gonna have to do some major work here if they're gonna try to come back from behind. Yes, they will. Uh, I think they, they still have time to have over seven minutes left. Oh, now with an interception like that. But they can't do it with that kind of play. Okay, ball goes right back over. Let's start again here. The Americans seem to be playing a kind of a swarming defense. They're double teaming the ball on every play, and they're being successful at it. Apparently, replay on this. Okay, here we, here we go. She's up under the basket. She goes for it, full concentration. She gets hit by the American League, which causes the foul. Okay, you know, uh, looking at the stats, second half, the national team has only had six shots attempted with one made. So that's one of their problems at this point. That's uh, because of the double teaming of the ball on defense by the Americans. That and, and the, the national, turnovers, yeah. Yeah, causing the turnovers. And the nationals are not able to figure out how to handle that double team. That's probably because their teammates aren't getting in a position where they can find them to pass the ball because whenever you're being double teamed, you gotta find a way to get the ball from you. Even before the double team gets to you, you should be able to see that and then pass the ball to get out of that trap okay. or the double team on the ball. Okay, situations like that, they should be able to capitalize on with the free throw shots they weren't able to, right. which is also hurting them. They've had eight turnovers that, you know, um, they're gonna have to do some major concentration now. They're down to six minutes, just over six minutes left. And we can see if they can set up some plays and, and get some points on the board here. They've only scored two points since halftime. Whoa. Okay, nice move on behalf of Sarah Rivera. She got uh, fouled. That foul was on the part of the American, number 11, Siobhan Scott. Okay, we're gonna look at this again. She drives to the basket. Uh, Siobhan was behind her trying to make up uh, for losing track of her and slipped and fell, which caused her to also uh, make a contact with Sarah to cause the foul. We'll see if they can make use of this. See, they're missing their foul shots. Yes. Sarah Rivera attempting the foul shots for the Nationals. Missed on the first one. <laughs> okay. If the Nationals could make their foul shots, as you're saying, Desiree, well, finally she made that one. Yes. Okay. That's very critical in a game like this. Yes particularly when you are this far behind on the scoreboard. Right. 
Oh, driving to the good basket. Good block, good block, good defense that time on the part of Ebony Garrison yeah, for the Nationals. Yeah, she's bringing the ball down. Number 10, Ebony Garrison. Oh, going to the hole. Oh! Wouldn't fall. It just wouldn't fall. They still got control of the ball, but uh, basketball is not going in for them at this point. But just like the Midgets, they're, they're giving it everything they have. No one's uh, giving up out here. As I said early on, they're serious, folks. Oop. Oh, nice save. She, she was very conscious of where her feet were. She sure was. She didn't want that over and back call. Sarah Rivera going, ooh. Didn't quite get to uh, to the net. She put up an air ball that time. Right. Okay, here we go. American League's gonna bring the ball down. Got a free man. She misses the layup. Failed to connect on the shot. Gonna take the ball out from underneath the basket. Siobhan Scott. Air ball. By Siobhan Scott. American League gets the ball again. Looking for the open man. Finds number 10. LaShonda Johnson representing Thurgood Marshall. They were unable to connect with a basket there. National League. Whoop. National League almost had a breakaway that time. Ooh, Sarah Rivera triple teamed. Holding on to the ball. She needs to get rid of it. Five second violation. That was a five second violation that time on the part of Sarah Rivera. If no defensive player had been around Sarah Rivera, she would have been able to stand out there longer than five seconds. Right. Okay, we're going to see that again. Look, she's triple teamed here. She's trying to get around. She has no help from her players, and by the time she does try to get someone over to help her, it's too late. Yes. She's fighting, though, trying to get through. Couldn't quite do it. Back to action here. American team going. Missing quite a few attempts to make a basket. Oh. The American team had five, three attempts, that is, three attempts. Uh-oh, underneath, shot open. They weren't. <laughs> Finally, the Nationals Ten Teneo. score again. Whittaker from Cadell Recreation Center. Scoring that. We see the replay here. She gets the pass underneath the basket, uses the backboard, and in. Sarah Rivera goes for the shot, misses. She, no foul call. All right. However, two in a row. Two in a row. Teammate Latasha Oliver from Central Recreation Center scores on behalf of the national team. Although, oh. She puts it up. And then for the Americans, Tamika Grayer. Tamika Grayer. Favorite Nicole player Collins. being <laughs> Michael Jordan. Yes. Replay okay, replay. Up. Here we go. We see her go up, backboard, up and in. True Nicole. fundamental basketball. Yes, it is. Nicole Collins back into the game for the Americans. You know, it's good to see that because a lot of players, you know, they forget the basics of learning how to use that backboard, and they think you have to be able to swish it, you have to be able to use on net, and that's not yes. necessarily the case. The object is to win the game, and if you use the backboard, your percentage is a lot higher. Kiss the glass. Okay, here we go. Miss Collins back in the game for the American League. She had a breather there, and uh, it would have been fortunate for the national team to use that chance with her sitting down to score, but they weren't able to score enough with her sitting down. And with her back in the game. We now have two minutes left. Two minutes left. Oh, down to the open player. Tamika Grayer. Tamika Grayer puts it up and in. And again, Nicole Collins looks for the free man. Unselfish player as she is. Replay. Replay, she passes down. All by herself, Miss Greer goes up and in. Tremendous save that time. Did you see that save yes. by Toronto Frazier? Oh, gets her own rebound. She gets her own rebound and scores two points. 
Sort of sounds like a broken record. Uh, she's Danica got a smile on her Brea. face. She's a little tired, but she got a smile on her face. Replay. <laughs> Replay. She goes uncontested. She goes up. She misses. She follows through. She's still under the basket. No one there. Goes right back up again. With one minute and 18 seconds left, our score now is 40 to 25 with the Americans in the lead. Okay, now I know Joe uh, Daniels and Nancy Owens have got to be telling their players uh, concentrate, make use of those foul shots when they get them, and yes. they're going to have to get under the basket and do less turnovers. Yes. Um, they've got 11 turnovers this half, 17 overall. That is too many turnovers. Uh, you can't win a game like that. And that's why we have the difference in score. At halftime, they were even. Turno uh, turnovers at halftime were only six to three. Right now, the National League has gone from six to 17. And the bad thing about turnovers in this case, Desiree, is that the Americans were able to capitalize by scoring points off the turnovers. And that's what you want to do in situations like that. Okay, a little bit too aggressive on the American team by number two, Tania Frazier from Lonnie Burton. She averaged six points during the season, and she attends East Tech. I think the story in this game today uh, particular in the uh, second half of play, particularly in the second half of play, the American team uh, was double teaming the player with the ball on the national side, and uh, that particular player didn't know what to do in order to beat the double team. So their defense, meaning the American team's defense, mm -hmm. really, really turned it on in that second half. That's true, and that leads us to seeing uh, Ebony Garrison on the foul line and we're going to see if she makes this shot because this is where they need to get those points. Yes. Unable to connect. However, she did average 11 points during the season and she attends Wilson. And her favorite player, Charles Barkley. Unable to connect on the second. That's hurting them. Foul underneath by Miss Collins. Which is going to put Oh, number 11. <laughs> number 11. You, you pronounced that one. Ferrer. <laughs> you didn't try her first name. <laughs> Representing <laughs> Sterling Recreation Center. <laughs> oh. She attends West Tech as a ninth grader, and her favorite player from the Chicago Bulls is B.J. Armstrong. All right. Not a bad player. Okay, she misses the second shot. Nicole Collins looks down underneath again. Oh, intercepted, however, on that pass. I'll tell you, Tamika Grayer, I don't think, realized that she had her teammate in back of her. Right. So she really kept the Americans from scoring on that play simply because she didn't have that realization. Brought the ball in, unable to capitalize with a score, so the National League's taking it down. Oh, there's only 30 seconds left in the game. Miss, whoa. Miss Collins making her presence known underneath the basket, obviously. Replay. You can see that again. She's under the basket. National goes up. She goes up to try to block, but she makes contact. Good defense, though. Which puts number nine, Lillian Romero, on the line from Clark Recreation Center, who attends Lincoln West as a 10th grader. She averaged seven points during the season. Still Great. unable to make the foul shots. This has really been bad for the Nationals. Yeah, they've, they, they've been struggling in that area in the second half. Yeah, really haven't been able to make the foul shots. Okay, the entire squad from the American League sits down while the other uh, Substitutions come in for the last 33 seconds. If the Nationals had been able to make 75% of their foul shots, this game would be much closer in the score. Haven't been able to do it, and so the result has been a 40 to 25 lead Underneath. by the Americans. Okay, American League got a little bit carried away there underneath the basket and got a traveling call, so the ball goes back over to the National League. Probably one of the last plays of the game. They go for a three-year, three-pointer, miss. American League gets the ball. Eight seconds left. I don't know if they're aware of the time. Five, four, Levine three, Scott two, misses. One. And that does it. 
Excellent play by the for, girls' juniors. Uh, yes, for our junior division all-star game. The final score, 40 to 25 in favor of the American team. Coached by Miss Levine Irvin, as well as Elliot Lanier. Well, we've seen great basketball right now. We're going to go to a break, and when we come back, we'll have the final stats for today's game and final uh, conclusion to all of today's activities. All right. We'll be back. Desiree. Okay. With that, we're going to head over to Mr. Tim Wells, who's got our two MVPs for tonight's game. Well, Des, it's been a great day. It's been the junior all-stars and two of those people that really played well today. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Ladies, if you would give them your name and the school and the grade that you attend. Samantha Greer, I attend West Tech. I'm in the ninth grade. Jahara Fredden, West Tech, ninth grade. we got two West Tech girls here. First of all, let's talk about Tamika. Tamika had 14 points. And uh, had a lot of basketball action today. If it wasn't the championship, it was the All-Stars. A lot of girls that, that leave this program are going to high school basketball. Do you feel that you're ready for that? And what kind of things have happened with your team as far as during the year practice-wise or coach? And what's really the program been like? It's been good for me. That's all I got to say. I don't have nothing else. Are you going to be going out for West Tech's team next year? It's closing down May 1st. Oh, I don't believe that play for another high school okay yeah. are you interested in playing high school basketball yep i'm too old for this now let me ask you this there's there's probably some people out here thinking about joining the program what advice would you give them i tell them to join it because they don't have nothing else to do keeps you out of trouble yeah keep you off the street too <laughs> tell us about that coach here is leonardo harris leonardo he good sometimes he may be mad when he good uh, That's all. I don't got nothing else to say. <laughs> okay. From Sterling Recreation, and I and I hope I get this right, Yara, um, you, one of the things that the committee, when they picked you, they said, you know, she wasn't the leading scorer, but she played great defense, she passed the ball, and she played exceptionally. One of the things is that you've been playing under Joe Daniels this past year. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Uh, He's a great coach, real great coach. All four years I played basketball, and for other people, I recommend them to do play for Sterling's. And I'm happy. Real happy. You know, the next program coming up are softball. Are you guys softball players? I am. You are? No. I don't hey. like softball. Well, tell me you could hit that ball if you got a chance. <laughs> what do you think? No, I ain't going to play softball. First of all, we want to congratulate both of you. Thank you. We want to wish you the best of luck. Both of these young ladies, Des, have really come along, not just in the athletic field. And it just worked out that they both happen to be outstanding students at their school. They have perfect attendance in some of the classes that they've been involved with. So realistically, we're going to end this note on a very positive note that the girls here today have put it all together. Back to you, Des. Okay, we've got this score, 40 to 25, to conclude the Junior All-Star uh, game that we had today had excellent play. Yes, we did. Yes, we did <laughs> final stats going into that uh, Very close although the the score there was a major difference at the end of the game The field goal percentage for the American League was 36 and there was only 37 for the National League and the major difference in that however Was free throw percentage the American League had 50% at the free throw line compared to 8% for the National League Which was their downfall? That, that kept them behind the second half. And then again, we had 17 from the National League, which hurt them greatly compared to six for the American League. Yes. So, yes. Uh, and both teams did outstanding rebound-wise. There was 30 rebounds for the American League and 21 for the National League. So uh, we had that outstanding play, not only from the midgets today, but as well from the juniors. From everybody we've seen here today, we had outstanding play. It's been a real good eventful day. And uh, we've seen some real good basketball played on the part of these girls out here today. Again, our score, final score in today's game uh, in the junior division all-star team, or game rather, that was played, uh, was 40-25 to 25 with the Americans in the lead. 
So Yeah, before we leave, though, we want to spe say special thanks again, uh, Acting Commissioner Mr. Irving White, Jr., Division of Recreation, as well as Royal Crest, Pepsi-Cola, EGS Expositions, AmeriFlag, Mike Zeta Trophies, and, of course, all of the camera crew for the Cablevision Channel 35 CLV. We want to thank all of them for their time and energy, all the coaches, all the staff members from the Division of Recreation, as well as the referees, Mr. Tim Wells, and thanks to you too, George. It was nice working with you. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed working with you, and I enjoyed working with everybody here today. It's really been fun being out here today, watching these girls play basketball. I didn't realize that we had such talented young oh, yes. people. And for those of you at home, we have a lot more in store for uh, Division of Recreation going into the summer months as well as girls softball. So look forward to give any recreation center a call and they can fill you in on all the programming that we've got in store. But until then, we want to thank you for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Yes, I want to say Desiree, thanks to everybody that came out here today and we want to thank you for your support throughout uh, this whole day's activities. Uh, we've seen some good basketball being played, as I mentioned early on. I'm sure that uh, the commissioner, Mr. Irvin White, uh, whom I mentioned earlier during the course of the day, I've known over the years when he was an insurance man, mm -hmm. and he wrote a life insurance policy for me. I'm still living, so they haven't been able to do anything about it. But uh, thanks again, and once again, from the Glenville Recreation Center, I'm George Abram with my partner Desiree Powell saying so long. We will see you again, perhaps in the future, doing the same thing at the same place. We hope you enjoyed today's game. Make sure you head over to our YouTube channel, TV20 Cleveland, and subscribe to get the latest videos. I'm Christian Patterson. Thanks for watching TV20 Classic Sports.